Hey, what's up everyone? This is Corey Glenn, and I'm going to do a quick presentation on just how to do some basic easy smile simulations. Uh, if you would like, this is going to be a template that will make your life a lot easier if you do want to try this out. And so we'll make that available to you. I'll give an email address at the end so that you can email us and uh, we'll get this over to you. So first and foremost, why would you want to do a 2D smile simulation? Well, there's a bunch of reasons. Uh, there's two primary ones that I use it for. So first of all, if you are a clinical treating dentist and you know, you're trying to do comprehensive treatment, there's really nothing that can sell a case better than showing that patient exactly what could be accomplished uh, to get them to buy in. You know, oftentimes if you're looking at spending tens of thousands of dollars to rehab your mouth, that is not something most people want to jump into unless they have, have an idea of what it's going to look like, and that's perfectly reasonable. Uh, the other big reason why I prim primarily use it nowadays is that we do a lot of full arch guided cases, and many times, you know, it's a patient like this where the, the teeth are in poor shape, uh, the aesthetics are not correct. And again, if we're trying to do, uh, for example, an immediate loaded hybrid that's going to be delivered at the time of surgery, like how do you make that? What shape should the teeth be? Where should the incisal edge be? So one of the biggest reasons I use it nowadays is to do a 2D simulation and find out what looks best in that patient's face. Then we can use that to dictate how the 3D wax up is going to go. So again, just a quick example here to give you a, a broad overview of what this is for. We've got a patient that, uh, you know, teeth are, are periodontally involved. They're going to be coming out and lots of diastemas, lots of uh, reverse smile line. And so we want to figure out what would look good on this patient first and foremost. So this is the simulation that was done. I actually think I did this one in a free program called GIMP, which is uh, a free version kind of, of, of Photoshop. Not the most intuitive to use, and I think there's some other options that you'll find more helpful. Uh, but nonetheless, you can see this is a very realistic looking simulation. Uh, we can use this, we can make multiple versions of it because they're super quick and show this to the patient or in, in a male's case, show it to their wife or their girlfriend or daughters or whatever because men don't care. Uh, but I promise you, if you'll start doing these routinely on patients that are interested in comprehensive treatment, you'll be amazed at how much easier case acceptance is. Uh, that's, that's my goal 100%. I don't want to have to sell treatment and talk people into it. I want them to want the treatment that I can provide, and this is an excellent way of accomplishing that. So again, you saw the preoperative, and we can go from here to here in under five minutes. Um, and there's a lot of programs that'll get you there. I'll go through some of them. And then we're gonna use that to dictate our three-dimensional wax up. So if you look at this side by side, this is the patient's current on the left and then the simulation on the right. And one of the very useful things that you can do is turn on the transparency so that you can see their current tooth positions underneath that. And that tells you exactly how much you need to add and where to accomplish this result with your 3D wax up. And so just a quick example here, this was a full arch case done in Blue Sky Plan. And so you can see that based on this picture, again, I'm referencing back and forth the whole time when I'm doing my 3D wax up, I'll reference that and then put the teeth where they belong. And that way we can generate the 3D wax up and our immediate load temps would be based off of this. If you were doing a fixed crown and bridge rehab, uh, your wax up uh, that you make putty stents and things off of, that would all be based upon this 3D wax up. And this just removes all the question marks. There's no wondering about, is this gonna be correct? Uh, it just really turns out nicely. Um, a couple other ways you can do this. You know, this was a case I did years ago. And at that time, I was just using Photoshop to do this, which is an excellent option. Photoshop's a really, really large program, so it can be a little difficult to navigate and uh, try to figure out how to use the tools. Again, I'll show you some alternative options, but here you can see the existing smile, and then the middle is the simulation that we did, and that was used to dictate the wax up. And you can see that the final crown and bridge rehab, this was an upper and lower, I think 24 crowns, uh, turned out really nice and it's almost an exact representation of what our simulation was. Uh, another program I've used pretty extensively is called DTS Pro. Uh, DTS Pro, if I'm not mistaken, is a um, subscription-based program, so you, it's so many dollars a month and then you can do all that you want. Very fast, very easy to use. 
Uh, and one of the most helpful things it does is it'll just generate this uh, simulation that shows the before and after. It'll even do like a looping video that just uh, makes the, the new beautiful looking teeth uh, show up and then it'll take them away and then it'll show them back up and then take them away. And I always tell people that, you know, if you can start playing that for patients, then whoever speaks next loses. Because there's only so long that patient's going to sit there and look at that and think, man, I, I really need to do this treatment. So DTS Pro is a great option. And then here are several options that are out there that you could use. Some actually for this purpose. Others programs like uh, PowerPoint, GIMP, uh, Photoshop. All of those are, are just general programs for imaging, but they do a really nice job of this. Uh, if you're looking for a specific dental software, there's the DTS Pro, there's Dentron Imaging, uh, DSD, Preview, Snap. I'm sure there's others that I'm not thinking of, but there's lots of options out there for this. So let's start here with this template. So this is what we'll email you. If you want to send us an email, we'll get this over to you. And I'm going to jump out of presentation mode so that you can see this. All this is is a really, really basic uh set of lines in Photoshop. Okay, so I've done one completely vertical line going right through the middle of the slide. I've duplicated that and you've got a second line here and then duplicate it again, put it on this side and then perpendicular to that I've got two horizontal lines. Okay, so let's uh, actually I'll go through the template first and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to use it. So that would be for like a full face photo, you know, patient just looking at the camera, big smile, and, and that's going to help you line everything up to the inner pupillary, the midline of the face and all of that. Uh, this next little slide would be for if you're doing a lateral view. So oftentimes what we're trying to figure out from that lateral view is how far forward or back we need to bring that incisal edge. So it's really useful to gauge it based on the wet dry line of the lip as far as how forward to bring the incisal edge. And then also these horizontal lines you can take and you can align it to the allotragus. And then if you've got that line, then this one being parallel to it is a great indicator of where your occlusal plane should be. And then I just use this on the profile of the face to help line things up. And then there's a few other useful tools in here. Uh, you've got the ability to grab some of these little things and hide identities. For example, if we wanted to uh, hide the identity of the lady I showed earlier, I could just grab this. And then we could just paste it on. So this is not that important if you're doing this, uh, you know, for patients in your office. But if you're going to do this and present, uh, show slides on the Internet, things like that, then you can do a lot of cool things to hide identities. All of these uh, glasses that I've got, there's several of those in here, different hair options, uh, male and female. There's mustaches, bunny noses, all of that kind of thing. So those are useful if you're going to be publicly presenting. And then finally, there's some PNG files that are already saved in this little template for uh, measurements. And so, for example, if you know that uh, a patient's lateral, or I'm sorry, central incisor measures, let's say, nine millimeters wide, well, then I could come up here, zoom in, paste this, and then we can just line this up on the patient's face. And once we have scaled that to something that's of a known dimension, then you've got a calibrated ruler that you can use for measuring anything else in the case. So if this cooperate, I'll get this over here and show you what I mean. This is definitely not cooperating. There we go. Okay. So again, if I know that that uh, central incisor measures eight millimeters wide, then I could just take this and scale it down until I'm right at eight millimeters. Okay. And now if I've got that, then I know each of these marks is one millimeter. I can take this and transfer it anywhere else on the face and measure things. So that's really useful as well. Um, and finally, let's see if there's anything else in the template. I, I think that's it as far as the tools. Now the last thing, and I will include this one, uh, you're going to need a bank of pictures that you can use to do the simulation, right? So you don't want to swap their ugly teeth with more ugly teeth. So I will include this picture. Uh, you'll notice here I've got just another slide that's got a whole bunch of pictures. I'm not going to include this in what I'll send to you because 
Quite frankly, I've just ripped these off of the internet. If you'll just go onto Google and do a search for retracted smiles or beautiful smiles, or just go to all the good cosmetic dentists that are out there in the journals uh, and rob pictures off their websites, uh, I'm sure there's probably some legal problem to me doing this, thus I'm not gonna share this slide. But you're not using this to rip their work off. Again, you're trying to do this to give a simulation to that patient of what is possible. And all of those dental softwares that I mentioned, they're gonna have a, uh, a bank of pictures that you can choose. So long teeth, feminine teeth, very uh, square teeth, all kinds of scenarios. So one of the wise things you can do is just over time, if you have a patient in the chair that's got really nice looking teeth, grab the retractors and take a couple of pictures of them. Do one with them biting in full occlusion, and then maybe one like this with the teeth slightly apart and maybe take them from multiple angles, okay? Because sometimes you've taken a full face picture and they may be looking down a little bit more or looking up a little bit more. That gives you a broader range of teeth libraries that you can choose from to put in there. So this I will share with you because this is one of my own cases. This is lady that we did upper and lower hybrids on. And so you could grab this smile and pull it in uh, in addition to that, I've gone through and I've actually used some tools, uh, some lasso tools within PowerPoint to outline each of these. So you could grab actually any of these individual teeth, lay them over something, you could scale them up, scale them down. Uh, there's a lot of cool things that you can do with that. So again, email us, we'll be happy to share this with you, but I want to just show you how to do one of the most basic things, which is to use this uh, frontal face picture to do a quick and simple simulation, okay? So I, uh, I found this uh, handsome young man that was willing to let us use his uh, picture for this. And so here what you're seeing is just the very base template, okay? So let's just pretend that we've got this picture. I'm gonna just grab this from wherever you've got it saved and I'm going to paste it, okay? One of the tools you'll use quite a bit in this process is if you right click and send this either to the front or to the back. So here, since I'm trying to line this up based on these uh, facial parameters, I'm gonna need to be able to move these things around. So when I'm doing the initial alignment, the very first thing I'm doing is trying to align the inner pupillary to the horizontal line that I've got. So here you can see this was uh, using dual flashes and you can see the little flashes reflected in my eyes there. And so once I have that, I could either copy this or if you've already got it in the template, now you've got a line that you can drag down here to put where you want the incisal edge to end up, okay? Um, so that's super useful. Now, sometimes you will have people with facial asymmetry. You know, for example, I've got a little bit more nose on one side than the other. Um, and so you can alter these things, you know, if you needed to, because the patient's got a facial cant, you can drag these things over and then just copy and duplicate that. Um, but that's something that, you know, you would just kind of do on a case by case basis. So we've got the midline of the face line. Okay. So when I'm aligning this, what I'm generally trying to do is go right through the very middle of the bridge of their nose. And then for the lower component, I try not to use the chin and the lower lip because sometimes those can get really asymmetric. Uh, what's been most reliable for me is to go right through the middle of the nose down here at the bottom or through that filtrum of the lip. And if you do that, that should really get this, uh, you know, lined up correctly to where now your picture is aligned. And because the picture can be a little difficult to rotate sometimes using this thing, Control Z that undoes uh, things. You could go to format picture, rotate, and more rotation options. And now you can go degree by degree, okay? So I'm just gonna go back to where I had it at four degrees. So now we have a picture, it is uh, scaled, it's aligned to our facial grid and everything. And what I need to do now is decide where would this ideal incisal edge be? So if you're looking at these teeth, they're pretty worn. You know, I'm guessing based on looking this guy at this guy that, you know, clearly he's just about to hit puberty. The mustache is filling in nicely. The cheeks, not so much. Uh, this guy's really grinding his teeth a lot. I would guess there's a lot of women in his life that, uh, you know, cause him to have quite a bit of stress. Uh, that's just speculation. But what's happening, you can start to see that these incisors are beginning to wear and actually they're now significantly higher than these canine tips. And you can see that just by dragging this over. 
Okay, so starting to develop a little bit of a reverse smile line, and we want to do something to try and give a simulation of maybe what this would look like if we were to do, say, a full mouth rehab, veneers, something like that. So my first thought is, okay, how far do I want to bring the incisal edge down? And you don't have to use these lines, but there's a reason to why I'm doing this. I think it will make more sense as we go. I'm going to go ahead and take this... Um, this lower horizontal line and bring it down to wherever I want that incisal edge to end up. So I'm gauging that based on the wet dry line of the lip. Uh, here I'm opened up slightly and so uh, you know I'm, I'm not going to bring this all the way down to the lip. And again the beauty of this is you can do a simulation and if it's ugly and it sucks then just delete it or make a new slide duplicate it and you can just do another you might have 10 different simulations that you do until you find something you, you really like so if you don't know exactly where you want the incisal edge uh, just do a couple of them experiment with it so for sake of this sim, uh, demonstration i'm going to say we want to put the incisal edge right on this horizontal line now the next thing I would want to do is try to gauge how big the teeth need to be. So if you think about back in dental school, probably in uh, D1 removable, the way they taught you to select the tooth molds was to go based off of the width of the nose. Okay, so if you were, were to bring this line in right there to the outer edge of the ala of the nose, and then same thing on this side, then that generally is going to correspond to the inner canine width. Okay, so get that lined up. And here you can see that's pretty, that's pretty good. That's almost exactly where my natural canines are. Uh, and again, you're not generally going to improve on what God gave them. So tooth scaling, that's a really good, useful reference. So now let's go ahead and what I'm going to do is right click the facial picture and bring it to the front. Okay, we'll go back and forth on that quite a bit. And now I'm going to go ahead and create the smile cutout. Okay, so uh, think of the face and the lips as the frame, and we're going to just be changing the picture that's within the frame. So the way I'm going to do that is go up here to insert a shape. And this little option right here is the freeform lasso tool. I'm going to choose that one. And now I'm going to go right along. Oops. Sometimes it will go haywire on you like that. So if it does, just grab it again, start over. So I'm going to start just click by click outlining the smile. Now you will have an option later on to edit any of these points. So if you get a little out of bounds, don't stress about it. You can alter that at any point. And there we have it. Okay, so a couple of things I would recommend you do is go ahead and right click this and on fill, choose no fill so that you can see what's going on underneath it. Also, this is a pretty heavy line. So if you'll right click and go to outline, go down to weight and do the very smallest line weight that you can do. So one quarter point. And then because you want this to blend in nicely, you can change the color of that outline as well. Uh, you could just choose an arbitrary color. The way I like to do it is to, once again, go to outline. You've got an option here for eyedropper. So if I was to just hover the eyedropper right over that border of the lip, then now, if you can see, that has turned the outline into the exact same color as my lip in those areas. So that's going to show up. Uh, you know, you'll see what you need to see, but it's not going to really show up in the simulation. <clears throat> Okay, so now let's go ahead and grab a smile. So for this example, I'm just going to use this one. Um, again, this is where it's nice to have lots and lots of different tooth shapes. So very masculine, with squared edges versus very feminine. Uh, let's just grab this one and we'll see how it looks. If it's not good, then we'll go back and choose another. And I'm going to paste this. Obviously way too big, so I'm going to scale that down. And at this point, I would say go ahead and click this picture and control click that one and right click, send it to the back because this is where we're going to need those lines as a reference. So what I'm going to do is pull this over, get my midline aligned correctly. And if you want to zoom in very quickly, hold your control and use the scroll up function on your mouse and that will scroll everything up. 
And now I'm just going to begin scaling this down. So I brought this in. This is why I want the lines on the front of, of these pictures. I've brought this in to where the canine is lined up on this uh, nostril. And then I'll bring this side in as well. And you'll have to kind of go back and forth just a little bit until you get that dialed in. But now you can see my inner canine width is set to match uh, you know, the width of what I suggested I wanted those six teeth to be. Now I can set the incisal edge. So again, I put that horizontal line earlier right where I wanted this to be. And by virtue of having these on the top, I can now align that. So this is all it took to do that simulation. Now, clearly this is not a great simulation, right? You're not gonna wanna go with that. However, what we can do uh, is, is fill this shape that we created earlier with this picture behind it, okay? Now, I wish there was a way in, photo, in PowerPoint that you could just cut out that mouth and then slide this in as a layer behind that. That would simplify this and cut out multiple steps of this. However, you can't do that. And what we're going to have to do is generate a little um, uh, snipping tool picture of these teeth, okay? So let me show you how I would do that. I'm going to grab this picture and I'm control selecting the face picture and bring those to the front again. Okay, so the lines go away. And actually, let me undo that. I wanna bring this one as well. So that shape, that shape, and the full face, and bring those to the front. So that's what I'm after. Now, while you've got that selected, and if you wanna get rid of that selection, you just gotta click somewhere else in the picture. I'm just gonna select this one right here. Go to your Windows uh, search and look for the snipping tool. I've got mine, uh, you know, tucked to the taskbar down here, and I'm going to choose to do a new snip. And the reason I want that picture selected, the, the, the polygon lasso tool that I did, is because when you select it, it doesn't just show that uh, the contour of that thing that you lassoed. Rather, it's going to show kind of a bounding box around that, and that's exactly what I want to snip. So I go from right here and over to the other side and down as far as that. Okay, so that's your picture that you've snipped. I'm gonna go ahead and save this and we'll call this uh, simulation. Now just to show you why it is that we do that, let me show you another thing that you could do. You could just select this picture. It's been scaled properly right and you could just save it as a picture and I'm gonna call this wrong simulation. Save that also on the uh, downloads. And now let's send this picture to the back. Okay, once we've done that part with it, we're pretty much done with it. We can send that to the back. And now the only thing I'm seeing is the full face and this shape. So let me show you the wrong way first. If I was to right click this um, polygon lasso uh, shape that I've generated, You've got some different options under fill, and one of them is that you can fill with a picture. So let's do that. If I choose the file, and again, I'm going to do the one called wrong simulation, which was just the whole picture. If I insert that, you see what happens. It doesn't scale things properly. It's going to instead smash that picture down and skew it to hopefully fit within that. And then you end up with a goofy looking simulation, right? So that's not gonna be something that's lifelike or realistic or that anyone would want. So let's control Z that, undo it. And now I'm gonna come back and do this the correct way. So zoom way in. Let's click on the boundary of that line. And this time I'm going to go to fill with a picture. And I'm gonna choose the one that I did properly. So this is simulation insert and now look at that you have a simulation extremely quickly and if we're trying to see if we fulfilled all our aesthetic guidelines i could select these things send them to the back that picture will send to the back again and now you can see midline lined up incisal edge right on the plane uh, the width is scaled to the nose for those anterior six teeth so this looks pretty darn good uh, you know, if, if the teeth were worse off to start with, they're not great, but if they were really bad to start with, a simulation like this 
would just blow a patient away, right? This is really uh, a game changer for someone whose teeth are in very bad condition and very quickly you can show them what's possible like this. That's a really, really cool thing that you can do that's gonna get patients to buy in on treatment. So let me show you, uh, that, that's the basics of what I was gonna show with this video. Now I'll show you a couple of other things that you can do. If you were to go up to format uh, this picture, so format picture, so we've been messing around in the fill menu. One of the things you can do is turn up the transparency. Okay, because one of my gripes with a lot of the uh, actual dental softwares that are out there is, yeah, you can cut out what's in between the lips and you can throw in a beautiful smile, right? But you have no idea if that can actually be accomplished because you can't see the teeth underneath it. And so, yeah, it might look great, but you know, if you're trying to get the patient to do crown and bridge, then you might have to go through five years of ortho or orthognathic surgery because the teeth simply don't line up with that. Whereas here, I can actually turn this transparency on and I can see the outline of the teeth that I've simulated based on, uh, or I'm sorry, I can see the teeth that I've simulated with the natural underlying teeth below that. So with this transparency, I can see very easily now, okay, I need to add exactly this much if I want my uh, wax up or my crown and bridge uh, rehab to look exactly like the simulation. Okay, you can tell that the widths of the teeth are lined up together. So this, this is a very useful feature. And if you're doing crown and bridge in particular, you've got to have the ability to do this. If it's an implant rehab or if it's dentures, it doesn't really matter, right? Because you're taking all the teeth out and you can put them wherever you want. But be aware, if, if you're going to do fixed crown and bridge work, you've got to bear in mind that you've only got so much that you can you know, stretch a tooth with a crown uh, before you start having to think about orthodontics, okay? So that's something to be aware of. Uh, let me turn the transparency back down. If you were to tab over here to picture, now you've got some different options of as far as what you can do with the shading okay so let me bring this to the front and now if i just click on this picture go to this i can now play with the brightness the color saturation the temperature all of those things so this looks a bit white to me and if i just take the temperature and drag it ever so slightly warmer that seems like it blends in a lot better now Okay, you can also mess with the contrast. Okay, so here you can see I'm uh, changing the contrast. I'll undo that. Once again, make sure you've just got that picture selected because usually the lighting is going to be different based on the uh, picture that is being simulated and the actual facial picture that you're doing. Okay, color saturation. We can go more or less saturation. I'll control Z to undo that. Uh, you've also got different daylight settings, right? So you could make this uh, more or less uh, ideal to match the face. So I'm going to control Z, undo both of those. Um, so those are just a few of the things that you can do here. Uh, there's a lot more options of cool stuff that you can do just purely within PowerPoint. And, and the beauty of this is that PowerPoint is a program most people have. Uh, I've not checked with Google Slides, but I would bet that you can do something very similar in Google Slides, which is entirely free. You don't even have to buy it up front, um, but that'll be another video for another day. But bottom line, this is what we were after. And if I send this now to the back and send that to the back, you can see uh, this is our final simulation. And if I wanted to do kind of a before and after, you know, I could maybe undo that. And let's say uh, control select both of these, copy, and then come over here, paste. All right, so that's one picture. And then I could grab the just straight up before picture, which is just this. And then scale these to the same size. And now you have a side by side of what that simulation would look like. Okay, so this is something you could train anyone in your office to do. 
Uh, they'll fumble around with it initially, but after doing two or three of these, it becomes very easy. And if they can just get proficient with doing this on any patient that is interested in comprehensive treatment, then generate this picture, print it, send it with them if it's a female patient. If it's a male patient, email it to their significant other and uh, you'll get a lot better response out of that. Uh, in any case, we'll do some more videos along the way that will show you how to do uh, things with like individual tooth outlines, uh, things like this. But just to keep this video short, we'll stop with that one for right now. Okay, so if you are interested in getting this template, uh, then just go to your web browser, go to www.transcendde for dentaleducation.com. This is our website. Uh, obviously, we give lots of courses. This is a big component in any of our courses we do about full mouth related topics, whether that's implant or crown and bridge or dentures. But if you go to Transcend DE, you can see here is courses that you could register for. Uh, the next course that's coming up is our full mouth uh, guided surgery level two. So this would be learning to make full arch uh, surgical guides, bone supported, immediate load prosthetics. And a big component of that is also how do we figure out where the teeth belong? So we really use this extensively in that course as well as in the crown and bridge courses and the dentures. But if you go up here to contact, then you can just fill out the information right here and put in your phone number and email. I promise you we're not going to spam you all the time with anything. Uh, we will put you in an email list just to let you know about upcoming courses. Uh, but aside from that, we'd be happy to send this to you. And I hope you found that helpful.